Hello everyone. Today we will finish our discussion on 2D electrostatics of MOSFET and we will uh, start understanding or we will start a discussion on quantum confinement in MOSFETs. So as all of you may recall that we have been studying the effect of small channels, uh, what happens when we make the uh, MOSFETs very small. In that case, we observe that there is this DIBL effect which is the drain induced barrier lowering and there is this uh, vo threshold voltage roll off as well which is the reduction of the threshold voltage as the channel length is reduced. And this is uh, this happens because of multiple factors. One of the factors is DIBL. Other factors might be the uh, that uh, that we need small voltage to deplete the channel because the source and drain depletion regions are becoming significant part of the channel. So, in order to account for all these things, we need to understand the 2D electrostatics, and that's why we start with the 2D Poisson equation. The 2D Poisson equation in the MOSFET looks like this. Uh, we need to take the derivative of potential uh, as a function of uh, with respect to both x and y and we need to find out the, we need to know the charge density both as a function of x and y in the MOSFET. So uh, if we do that, <coughs> what we see is that we can write down this 2D Poisson equation just like a 1D Poisson equation. But now on the right hand side instead of QNA by epsilon s we need to write QNA effective by epsilon s where this uh, QNA effective by epsilon s is QNA by epsilon s minus del to psi by del x square which means that NA effective is Na minus epsilon s by q into del to psi by del x square. And what we also saw last time is that this quantity del to psi by del x square is a positive quantity in the MOSFET. <coughs> so, which essentially uh, means that Na effective is smaller than Na, the doping of the channel. So, what it essentially says is that we can consider the 2D electrostatics just like the 1D electrostatics, but what we need to uh, consider is that uh, we need to consider a modified doping of the semiconductor material in the channel. And that is an important point and I uh, advised you all of you to uh, look into how various device parameters change if we make this change. If instead of Na we replace uh, the Na by Na effective, how does various parameters change? So here we will see uh, the threshold voltage of the device. The threshold voltage is given by this formula if all of you remember it. Uh, the threshold voltage is a combination of the flat band voltage the voltage drop across the oxide this is the V ox and the voltage drop across the semiconductor. So at the threshold voltage the voltage drop across the semiconductor is just 2 psi B and the voltage drop across the oxide is given by the is determined by the depletion charge divided by the oxide capacitance. The depletion charge as you see here or the threshold voltage itself depends on the square root of the doping of the semiconductor. Now if we consider the 2D electrostatics and what we would need to do is we would need to replace Na by Na effective and Na effective is smaller than Na as seen from here. So what it means is now this Vt while we consider the 2D electrostatics will be smaller than Vt when we only consider the 1D electrostatics. So what it means is that for small channels where we need to consider the 2D electrostatics because this is a significant parameter there, this is a significant number there. This is not significant in long channels so we can ignore this, we can uh, do a 
reasonably well treatment with 1D electrostatics, but in small channel we need to consider this. So we need to do a 2D electrostatic analysis, so the threshold voltage essentially will drop down. So this also explains the, uh, I would say the DIBL or the threshold voltage roll off that we started discussing with. Uh, and similarly, various other parameters will also change, the depletion width will change, all of these things, all of those parameters you can uh, yourself figure out, okay. So essentially, uh, the 2D electrostatics would decrease the threshold voltage and reduction in channel length or increase in the drain voltage, this in, they increase this parameter d2 psi by dx square and that is why they would reduce the effective doping in the semiconductor and that is why this threshold voltage roll off will be, can be explained using the 2D electrostatics, okay. Now uh, this is, this is uh, sort of the shortcomings of the uh, 2D electrostatics or shortcomings of the short channels. Now we will see how do we essentially mitigate these, uh, uh, these uh, unwanted effects this threshold voltage roll off is an unwanted effect, we will see how to mitigate this. And in order to see that we need to understand an important concept, the concept known as screening. This is an important concept in electrostatics and generally uh, it, is, uh, it is there in uh, when the charges, when there are lot of mobile charge carriers. It is prominent in liquid state, even in solid state where the free charge carriers are there. So what is screening? So what screening says is that in a system of charges, in a system of charges which means in a system where we have mobile charge carriers, if we put an additional charge or if we create a charge perturbation. Then what happens is because of that charge perturbation or the, that additional charge, the mobile charge carriers rearrange themselves in such a way that they will neutralize or screen out that perturbation after a certain distance. So in this figure here, as you can see this, this is a system of mobile charge carriers the blue ones are the positive charge carriers and the red ones are the negative charge carriers. What we do is we put a, 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 some positive charge in the system. Then what happens is that the negative charge carriers organize themselves or they rearrange themselves in the system in such a way that after a certain distance, if we look after a certain distance, the effect of this positive charge and the collective effect of the negative charge will neutralize each other, which means that we will not feel any potential due to this positive charge after a certain distance. And this is shown by uh, this uh, circle here, that in the circle as if we see, uh, there is this uh, large positive charge plus Q, but in order to neutralize this, the negative charges have rearranged themselves in such a way that are after this distance, uh, this plus Q charge is as if screened out. So this also happens in solids because in solids, especially in semiconductors and metals, there are a lot of free charge carriers, electrons and holes and if we create any charge perturbation, uh, in that case, that charge perturbation is screened out, okay. And uh, that is why we cannot uh, write the simple Coulomb potential formula in these systems where mobile charge carriers are there. And we need to write down the screened Coulomb potential formula and this is how it looks like. So the potential due to any charge phi r at a distance r is given by the Coulomb's law which says that the potential is charge divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r. Epsilon naught is there because we are considering the free space if we need to consider the semiconductor instead of epsilon naught, we need to replace it by epsilon s, okay. This is the simple Coulomb potential formula, but in presence of mobile charge carriers, we would additionally have an exponential term which is 
एक्सपोनेंशियल माइनस आर बाई एल डी और एक्सपोनेंशियल माइनस के नॉट बाई के नॉट टाइम्स आर वेयर के नॉट इज वन बाई एल डी एंड दिस एल डी इज नॉन एज द डिबाई लेंथ ऑफ द मेटीरियल सो वॉट इट मीन्स इज दैट विद ईच डिबाई लेंथ द पोटेंशियल ड्यू टू द चार्जेस ड्यू टू अ चार्ज परटर्बेशन और ड्यू टू एन एडिशनल चार्ज डिकेज बाई वन बाई ई इन एडिशन टू इट्स इन एडिशन टू द कोलम पोटेंशियल फॉर्मूला देर इज एन एडिशनल डिके ड्यू टू द स्क्रीनिंग ऑफ द चार्ज एंड आफ्टर अ सर्टन डिस्टेंस दिस पोटेंशियल ड्यू टू अ चार्ज विल बी ऑलमोस्ट जीरो विल बी इन सिग्निफिकेंट आफ्टर अ फ्यू डिबाई लेंस ओके सो दिस नोशन इज इम्पॉर्टेंट बिकॉज दिस इज ट्रू फॉर अ चार्ज परटर्बेशन बट दिस इज ऑल्सो ट्रू फॉर एनी इलेक्ट्रिकल फील्ड दैट इज अप्लाई टू अ मटीरियल सो वेन वी अप्लाई एन इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड इन अ मटीरियल एंड इफ द मटीरियल हैज मोबाइल चार्ज कैरियर्स दैन द मोबाइल चार्ज कैरियर्स सॉर्ट ऑफ रीऑर्गेनाइज और रीअरेंज इन सच ए वे दैट द इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड लाइन्स आर टर्मिनेटेड अप टू अ सर्टन डिस्टेंस एंड दैट्स वॉट इज द टेक्निक दैट वी यूज इन ऑर्डर टू न्यूट्रलाइज द बैड इफेक्ट्स ऑफ द टू डी इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक्स एंड दिस टेक्निक इज नोन एज द ज्योमेट्रिक स्क्रीनिंग बिफोर गोइंग इन टू द दिस आइडिया ऑफ ज्योमेट्रिक स्क्रीनिंग दिस डिबाई लेंथ फॉर द सॉलिड स्टेट मटीरियल फॉर द सेमी कंडक्टर्स इज गिवन बाई दिस फॉर्मूला एंड एज यू कैन सी द डिबाई लेंथ इज इनवर्सली प्रपोर्शनल टू द number of free charge carriers in the semiconductor so if there there are more number of charges present in the semiconductor the debye length will be less which means that the charge will be screened in a smaller distance and the same thing is true for any electric field that is applied to the material and that is that actually uh, gives us an interesting technique which is known as the geometric screening technique so it is illustrated here in these figures so essentially what happens in a in a small uh, mosfet in a nano mosfet that if we apply any vds that any drain voltage the drain voltage the electric field due to the drain impacts the barrier height which is which means that the drain electric field is having its impact on the source side as well okay so what we can do is that whenever a drain voltage is applied whenever we apply a voltage on the drain terminal it will uh, create electric field lines because a positive voltage will create uh, electric field lines starting from the drain terminal and the nearby mobile charge carriers will rearrange themselves in such a way that these lines terminate to them okay so what we need to do is we need to have more number of mobile charge carriers very close to the drain side so that the electric field lines emanating from the drain terminal terminate quickly terminate at a short distance so the distance up to which these electric field lines persist is known as the screening length so in this figure here as we can see that the screening length is represented by this capital lambda uh, so here as you can see the screening length is almost equal to the channel length and this is the case of the bulk mosfet so in a bulk mosfet what happens is uh, if we make a nano mosfet uh, the screening length which means the length up to which the electric field lines from the drain will terminate uh, is quite comparable to the channel length so what it means is that the drain electric field will have its impact on the source terminal as well okay so the geometric screening technique is that we try to make a mosfet geometry such that these lines terminate very close to the drain side itself so as you can if you see here in these figures uh, this is the geometry in which the electric field lines from the drain terminal this is the drain this is the source are terminating almost midway terminating very close to the drain terminal and this geometry of the mosfet is known as the 
डबल गेट एस ओ आई मॉसफेट डी जी एस ओ आई मॉसफेट डी जी मीन्स डबल गेट सो वी हैव गेट ऑन टॉप एंड वी ऑल्सो हैव अ सेकेंड गेट बिलो द चैनल एंड द चैनल इज जस्ट अ स्मॉल पीस ऑफ सिलिकन स्मॉल पीस ऑफ सेमी कंडक्टर ऑन बोथ साइड्स ऑफ द सेमी कंडक्टर वी हैव इंसुलेटर और दिस ऑक्साइड लेयर so this is known as the soi device silicon on insulator so in soi devices what we do is instead of using a bulk silicon in the body we use a, a very thin layer of silicon very thin layer of semiconductor and then we have the oxide layer which is known as the buried oxide or beox this is a very thin layer of silicon and this is grown on top of a silicon so instead of using just a uh, a bulk silicon we use a thin layer of silicon buried oxide and silicon in double gate structures what we do is we uh, put a gate on this side as well like this so this is a double gate soi mosfet in which we have a source we have a drain in between we have a small semiconductor channel on both sides of the semiconductor channel we have the oxide and the metallic gate so in this case what happens is that the electric field lines that start from the drain terminal they will terminate to the to these gate to both of these gates very close to the drain terminal the reason for that is that this gate has lot of electrons and these electrons reorganize them themselves such that they uh, will sort of sink most of the electric field lines to them so that means uh, that in a in smaller devices if we can enclose the channel by gate on maximum sides on more number of sides in conventional mosfet we have the gate only on one side but if we, we can somehow enclose the channel from more number of sides then we can terminate the electric field lines starting from the gate very close to the gate itself so that this technique is known as the geometric screening technique and this is the dgsoi structure mosfet this is the bulk silicon and this is the single gate soi mosfet in this case what uh, is there is source drain silicon oxide buried oxide and p silicon this is a single gate structure so as you can see as compared to the single gate soi structure this double gate soi structure is more effective so that's why we uh, need to use these soi uh, mosfets if we want to make mosfets less than 10 nanometer or around 10 nanometers of channel length so these kind of techniques need to be used this is known as the geometric screening technique and this is used to neutralize the effect of the 2d electrostatics or i would say the mal effects of the the bad effects of the 2d electrostatics so in this case uh, the threshold voltage is not changed a lot and uh, and we can maintain the consistency of the threshold voltages across various devices so uh, so as i just told you a few minutes back that the length up to which the electric field lines are terminated is known as the screening length and generally we try to make sure that the screening length is smaller than the channel length and in that case the dibl will be low because the electric field due to the drain will not have any impact on the source side so the dibl will be low ideally we would like to have this uh, screening length or length should be greater than thrice of the screening length actually the channel the total channel length should be greater than the thrice of the screening length so this is generally one of the uh, standards or one of the points that is kept in mind by device designers while designing small mosfets while designing the nano mosfets so in order to achieve this uh, nowadays uh, and some of you might be aware of this that instead of using these planar mosfet structures nowadays in nano uh, mosfets these kind of structures are getting are being used and these are known as finfets 
So the principle is, uh, the basic principle is almost the same. Here we have a channel uh, between the source and the drain. These are the contacts to the channel. And the channel is now vertical. It's like a fin. And the gate is now on the three side of the channel, as you can see. On this left side, top and right side. So that way, the gate will be able to give a very good geometric screening to the drain electric field. So we can make very small channel lengths in this kind of geometry. So that's why the fin fits are uh, have, had become extremely popular uh, in uh, few nanometers MOSFET device architectures. And there can be uh, the gate can be on two sides, three sides, or even on four sides. So that's why these nanowire MOSFETs in which the gate is all around the nanowire uh, are even more uh, are even better than these double gate or triple gate structures because in that case the screening length is even smaller okay so these are some of the novel uh, techniques that are being used in nano mosfets in order to mitigate the impacts of the small channel effects okay so this is a typical guideline that the device designers follow that the screening length should be uh, or the channel length should be at least thrice of the screening length and the basic principle is that the more we surround the channel with the gate electrode the more effective this screening will become so therefore the dgsoi structure has the strongest screening in all these three but this this will have even better screening and a nano wire mosfet will have even better than the finfet screening so in general the screening length of the bulk mosfet is greater than the screening length of the dgsoi mosfet and that is greater than the nano wire mosfet in the nano wire mosfet the channel is just a nano wire and on all sides of the nano wire there is a gate although these structures are difficult to fabricate but they give us better control on the channel in small devices so that's all about uh, the 2d electrostatics and we can also do phenomenological analysis of the screening length uh, in the in the solids although we will not go into that here because of the time constraints but in principle these are the basic uh, concepts that we need to keep in mind while designing a nano mosfet okay so uh, so with this uh, we will now see another important uh, consideration we will now to uh, now need to understand another important effect which is the quantum confinement in a mosfet what is a what is quantum confinement in mosfets just take a moment and think about it uh, where is the quantum confinement or where is the confinement happening in the MOSFETs? If you recall that uh, the MOSFETs uh, in the depletion region, by now we are familiar with this kind of structure. So in the inversion and in the depletion region, this is how the bands look like. And the band profile is quite similar to the, or this band profile is actually exactly same as the potential energy profile of the electrons. So as you see that uh, on the interface which is also the channel region we have this kind of potential profile in the MOSFETs and these are the regular MOSFETs, these are even the bulk MOSFETs. So, uh, so what it means is that in the inversion regime the MOSFETs have this kind of potential energy profile at the interface of the oxide and the semiconductor which means that this is and this is also the region of the inversion layer. So most of the electrons stay in this kind of potential profile in MOSFETs even in the bulk MOSFETs. This happens at the interface of the oxide and the semiconductor. And this is actually, uh, if you recall our discussion of a particle in a box, the basic principle is if the electron is confined, it will lead to discretization of the energy levels. And this is a confinement, 
confinement means that now the potential is sort of constraining the movement, constraining the, uh, the movement of electrons in this direction. Apart from this, what we just saw in SOI structures, the SOI structures are like this. We have a source, we have a drain, we have a gate oxide gate and in SOI structure we have a silicon semiconductor uh, silicon here, then we have buried oxide which is B ox and then we have again semiconductor. Most of the times this silicon layer, this semiconductor layer is extremely thin. So, which means that this buried oxide is up to here. So, all of this is buried oxide and this layer is extremely thin. Few nanometers only. So, in this case also the electrons will be confined between the two oxides in a way. So, this is a potential confinement, this is the confinement due to the potential energy of the electrons, this kind of confinement. This is a geometric confinement. So, in SOI MOSFETs there is a geometric confinement as well. In regular MOSFETs there is this confinement due to the potential profile of the electrons. Now, we need to see if we need to consider quantum mechanics or not in these two cases or when do we need to consider the quantum mechanical effects. And in order to find out that, let us do a simple, a quick calculation, when do we need to consider <coughs> the quantum confinement in the MOSFETs or when do we need to apply quantum mechanics in these confinement scenarios. So, there are two scenarios, one is because of the uh, potential energy, second is because of the geometry. And both of these are prominent in nano MOSFETs. So, let us see uh, when should we consider the quantum confinement in MOSFETs. Uh, for a quantum mechanical particle or for any particle, the momentum is given by this relationship, P is actually equal to h bar times 2 pi by lambda b. This is the uh, straightforward de Broglie relationship. Now, the electrons have the energy equal to p square divided by 2 m star in the devices, where m star is the effective mass of the electrons. If we consider a very general case and if we consider the energy of the electrons equal to just the thermal energy, therm energy uh, in thermal equilibrium. So, which means if we consider E to be just equal to the thermal energy which is 3 kT by 2 and this comes from the classical uh, thermodynamics. Uh, this is just for a rough calculation. In that case, the momentum is from these two relationships, the momentum will be given by from these two square root of 3 kT m star. Okay. And if we put this value of the momentum in this de Broglie relationship, we would be able to find out the de Broglie wavelength of the electrons, when the electronic energy is just the thermal energy of uh, at a temperature T. So, uh, by making this replacement, lambda b turns out to be equal to h bar. So, h bar is h by 2 pi. So, if we replace h bar by h by 2 pi, this goes away. Lambda b is just h by square root of 3 m star k b, k b t. And at room temperature, if we do this rough calculation, what it turns out to be is 6 nanometer. So, lambda b on an average turns out to be around 6 nanometer. So, what it says is that at room temperature by a very rough calculation, the de Broglie wavelength of the electrons is around 6 nanometers. What it means is that if the electrons are confined in 
this order of distance, then we need to consider the wave nature of the electrons. We need to consider the quantum mechanical effects. We need to consider the discretization of energy levels. So what it means is that if this confinement due to this potential energy profile, if this distance is around this value 5 to 10 nanometers or below that value, smaller than that, in that case we need to consider the discretization of the electronic energy levels. And similarly, in SOI structures, if uh, the silicon, this is the oxide, if the silicon layer, the semiconductor layer is 5 to 10 nanometers, in that case also we need to consider the quantum mechanical effects. And the basic principle is that the confinement leads to discretization. So what it means is that the energy of the electrons will be discretized in this direction, the direction of the confinement. So in these 3D devices, the electrons and holes at in these regions will behave like a quasi 2D systems. They will behave like uh, a 2D electron gas or 2D hall gas. So these are the two scenarios in the bulk MOSFETs, the electrons are confined by a potential well at the interface and the potential well looks like this as we have just seen. In extremely thin SOI structures, ET SOI structures, there is a structural confinement because the silicon, the semiconductor layer is extremely thin and in that case, the confinement is like this. There is this rectangular potential well. In bulk MOSFETs, we have the triangular potential well. In, so this analysis we have already done. The similar analysis can be done about the energy states of the electron because of this kind of confinement, uh, because of the electron confinement in a triangular box and this gives us various discrete energy levels of electrons by this relationship. So this you can do this uh, as a homework exercise, this we already know these various energy levels. So in these potential well, the electrons and holes will behave like quasi 2D electron gas or quasi 2D hall gas, which means they are free to move in two directions. They are free to move in X and Z directions because uh, if we look at the geometry of the devices, this is the Y direction, this is the Y direction and the confinement is in the Y direction. In X direction, which is this direction, they are free to move and in the z direction which is perpendicular to this surface is also the free movement of the electrons and holes. So essentially in almost all the MOSFETs because this the thickness, this uh, thickness of the inversion layer is only few nanometers. So this is of the order of the de Broglie wavelength of the electrons even in the bulk MOSFETs. So in the in almost all the MOSFETs we need to consider the quantum confinement of the charge carriers. And what does quantum confinement do? Quantum confinement uh, leads to creation of quasi 2D electron gas and quasi 2D Hall gas. What it means is, just to repeat it, the carriers are free to move in parallel to the interface in X and Z directions, but they are tightly confined in the normal direction to the interface. And that is the case even with the bulk MOSFETs, even with the traditional long channel MOSFETs. So even in the long channel MOSFETs, we need to consider the quantum confinement of the electrons. And how do we consider this uh, quantum confinement? Uh, so this confinement leads to quantization of the energy levels in the direction of the confinement. And that is why the conduction band or the valence band or the energy bands, both of the energy bands are split in the regimes of the confinement. This we have already seen, this kind of confinement we have already seen in 
quasi 2D materials case where the charge carriers, the electrons are free to move in two directions, but they are confined in the third direction and the similar thing will happen here. So, the electrons and holes will have continuous energy levels in two directions, x and z directions and the discrete energy levels in y directions and the total energy of the electrons can be written as E total is equal to E x z plus E y. This is continuous, this is discrete and this we need to keep in mind. Before uh, going into the details of uh, this, before going into the details of uh, the splitting of the bands or formation of the sub bands, we also need to consider another important concept which is the uh, iso energy surfaces in the semiconductors. So, if you remember the E k relationship for the semiconductors for 1D solution, the 1D solution of the uh, KP model, this is how the E k relationships look like. On the y axis we have E, on x axis we have K and this was the case for 1D materials, 1D solids. Generally uh, almost always we have 3D materials and for the 3D materials we cannot plot the E k relationship because that will be a 4D plot because we need to consider E versus k x, k y, k z, okay. So, what we do is what we plot what is known as the constant energy surfaces in order to understand the uh, the band structure along various directions, constant energy surfaces and what are the constant energy surfaces? So, we plot all those k points, all those reciprocal lattice points k x, k y, k z points for which that give the same energy or that correspond to the a constant energy of the electrons. So, the which what it means is that for all these points the Schrodinger equation solution will correspond to this energy and that is known as the, so plot of all these points is known as the constant energy surfaces in three directions. So, what we just need to do is we need to take any value of E and corresponding to that value of E we need to plot all possible combinations of k x, k y and k z in the reciprocal space. Uh, generally uh, the most important energy for us to consider is the energy at the bottom of the conduction band because that is where most of the transport happens. So, that is why we plot the constant energy surfaces at the corresponding to the bottom of the conduction band and this is how the constant energy surface for the silicon looks like. You can see that we have ellipsoids, 6 uh, ellipsoids in k x, k y, k z space and these are all possible combinations of k x, k y, k z points corresponding to a certain energy which is close to the bottom of the conduction band of the silicon. And why is this important? Because the electrons in the MOSFETs are confined in y direction and they are free to move in the z direction. So, that is why we need to and from these uh, constant energy surfaces what we see is that the mass of the electrons or the effective mass of the electrons which is inversely proportional to the curvature of the E k diagram. So, the effective mass of the electron depends on the E k plots ok and this effective mass can also be derived from the these constant energy surfaces. So, 
we would like to see the mass of the electrons in the direction of the confinement and in the direction of the or in the continuous direction as well. And if we have a closer look here and let us consider the case of x direction, just the x direction. In x direction, if we consider there would be two effective masses corresponding to the electron. One is the longitudinal effective mass and that depends on this curvature. So, the curvature is uh, this curvature will govern the effective mass in x direction and the second effective mass will be the transverse effective mass which is because of this curvature. So, as you can see the long in the longitudinal direction the curvature is less. So, the effective mass will be more and in the transverse direction the curvature is more and the effective mass will be less. So, the longitudinal effective mass of the electrons is 0 0.9 times the rest mass and the transverse effective mass is the 0 0.19 times the rest mass. Okay. So, in the just to quickly review the quantum confinement in MOSFETs, we need to consider the quantum confinements because of the potential well at the interface and in ETSY structures there is a geometrical confinement as well, there is a structural confinement as well that is also we need to consider and because of these confinements the energy levels will be discrete. So, uh, we need to consider this kind of energy state and do the analysis according to a quasi 2D structure. Now, there is a nuanced uh, point here which is the difference in the effective mass along different directions and that is uh, understand that can be understood from the constant energy surfaces in the silicon in the semiconductors. So, I will uh, stop here and I will let you think about uh, these concepts, the concepts of quantum confinement and the constant energy surfaces or iso energy surfaces they, they are also known as iso energy surfaces. With these uh, points, we will complete in the next class, we will complete our discussion on the, uh, on how to consider the or how to account for the quantum confinement in the MOSFETs. So, thank you all of you, see you in the next class.